In the not too distant future, the majority of individuals are flawlessly manufactured in labs and eugenics rules society. Everybody is listed in a genetic database, and those created in laboratories are referred to as valids, and those created organically are called invalids, due to their increased susceptibility to genetic abnormalities, which can range from serious illnesses to simple baldness. Despite the legality of genetic discrimination, businesses continue to use genotype profiling techniques, such as taking urine samples or even swabbing the resume envelope. These males who are ineligible are always assigned to low-paying employment. Vincent spends a lot of time in his flat shaving and cleaning himself until he is very clean, at which point he burns any remaining hairs and dead skin. He then connects a pea bag he stole from the refrigerator to his groin in order to pass it off as his own. Additionally, he inserts a small amount of blood into a fictitious fingertip, which he then cautiously joins to his real finger. Following that, Vincent starts working for Gataka Aerospace Corporation. For an identity check to be completed, each employee must prick their finger. Vincent allows the machine to draw blood from his fictitious fingertip. After that, he uses a computer at his desk to run various space travel designs. Occasionally, he uses a small gadget to remove any evidence of DNA from his keyboard. In addition to expressing admiration for Vincent's hygiene, the mission director stops by to let him know that he has been selected to board a flight to Titan, Saturn's moon, in one week. Once the man leaves, Vincent coversely cracks open a jar and scatters human hair, nails, and skin all over his desk. Next, he places a strand of hair on the comb he keeps inside his desk drawer. Subsequently, Vincent has a drug test to ensure he is clean prior to the assignment. He offers a urine sample using the hidden bag, and the doctor uses the machine to verify that the sample is legitimate and bears his name Jerome. Vincent's co-worker Irene stops by to congratulate him on receiving a mission after work while he watches another plane departing Earth. She also makes note of the fact that he is the sole worker that attends each and every launch on a daily basis. Then, a flashback revealing Vincent's early years starts. Since his mother unintentionally became pregnant after his parents had a quickie on the beach, Vincent was delivered naturally a rarity in and of itself at the time. His life expectancy was estimated to be 30 years after the physicians obtained a blood sample from him, as soon as they apprehended him, and determined he had a high probability of having many diseases. Because his mother saw even the smallest things, like a runny nose or a small scratch, as potentially fatal Vincent had a very tough childhood. Because of his defective genes, no school would admit Vincent as a student, because his insurance wouldn't pay for any problems he encountered. When his parents finally made the decision to become parents again, they visited a genetic lab and followed all the guidelines this time. Although Anton was free of any restrictions and delighted to spend time with his brother, Vincent could sense that his parents had a preference. The brothers used to play a game called Chicken in the Sea while their parents weren't watching. The object of the game was to see who could swim the furthest from shore. Before becoming afraid and turning around, Vincent's inferiority complex was exacerbated by the fact that Anton consistently defeated him in this competition. Vincent developed an interest in space and an ambition of becoming an astronaut as he grew older. Despite his parents' warnings that his genes would prevent him from being hired, he disregarded them and attended a few interviews. He was disappointed that no one employed him as his parents had assumed. To Anton's surprise, Vincent beat him again when the brothers went for a swim one afternoon. Indeed, Vincent had to turn around and assist a weary Anton in making his way back to the coast. They didn't swim together again after that since Vincent left his family's house in the evening to follow his aspirations. Vincent eventually secured a position as a janitor at Gataka. Sometimes he would use the computer while no one else was around, admiring the daily launches as he cleaned the offices. In addition, he discovered the daily occurrence of a blood prick on the same finger and took a small sensor that had fallen off a machine. Vincent would often be teased by the head janitor for his constant dreams. Vincent would never stop working out in his apartment, which might be bad for his health. In the end, driven by a desire to advance, he made the decision to get in touch with a man on the underground scene, who introduced him to the genuine Jerome a former swimming champion, with an excellent IQ, and excellent health aside from his legs. After being struck by a car, he became wheelchair-bound and crippled. Since the occurrence took place abroad and was unrecorded, no one was aware that Jerome had turned invalid. A protracted process of metamorphosis started when Vincent paid both guys to obtain Jerome's identification. In addition to getting Jerome's eye color and groomed hair, he obtained contact lenses to replace his glasses. ID photos wouldn't be an issue because DNA was the only thing that mattered and people no longer paid attention to them. The final problem was that Vincent was shorter than Jerome, which meant that he had to grudgingly endure an arduous surgery that involved breaking and lengthening his legs until their heights matched. In order to have Jerome's address, Vincent moved into his flat. For the first few days, he had to relax in order to recuperate from the surgery, which meant that he was frequently in agony. Vincent picked up Jerome's signature and learned how to write with his other hand during those days as Jerome continued to fill bags with blood and urine. Vincent was reminded he had a a lot to live up to when Jerome once showed him his silver medal. In order for Vincent to become accustomed to being called Jerome, Jerome also instructed Vincent to address him by his middle name Eugene. When Vincent's interview day finally arrived, he used a pee bag and tested it on the machine, but the urine included alcohol 
Thus he received an error warning. After inspecting many bags and concluding that the last one was clean, Vincent began berating Jerome for the consequences of his addiction and carried it with him. The test was administered by the doctor in the office and the machine verified that Vincent was Jerome and so a valid. Instead of sending him for a formal interview, they recruited him right away based only on his IQ. From that point on, Vincent had to spend every day cleaning his body to remove any loose hair, nails, or skin that had been incinerated in an incinerator. Each article of clothing was stored in a zippered bag to prevent contamination. Vincent would use the fictitious fingertip with Jerome's blood to pass the identity check at the door while he worked, spreading Jerome's samples across his desk to maintain the illusion. No one ever voiced suspicions. In the present, the corporate administrator has been killed with a keyboard and everyone in Gataka is freaking out. Jerome doesn't see the an eyelash has fallen off as he scrapes his eye from staring at the graphic scene. The police show up shortly after to collect every trace of DNA from the crime scene, including the eyelash. Irene's supervisor orders her to help the cops however they can. Vincent will still be traveling to space and the trip is not being cancelled. He tells Jerome the news and together they decide to celebrate by going out. They consume large amounts of alcohol and even perform stunts using smoke in their cups. Irene removes Vincent's hair from his drawer at work and gives it to a matchmaking business, which does some tests and determines that Vincent Vincent is quite a catch. Jerome gets so wasted by the end of the night that Vincent has to put him to bed. Jerome abruptly admits that he wasn't intoxicated when the automobile crashed and that he was actually attempting to cut himself off. Gataka is now the main suspect after the police forensic section checks all the samples the next morning and finds a strange invalid has been in the area. Returning to Vincent he spins the chair's wheels extra forcefully to mimic exercise while placing the small sensor he stole back in his janitor days on Jerome's chest to record his heartbeat for 20 minutes. After being put through a running test at Kataka, Vincent swaps out the office sensor for the one he brought from home. In the meantime, the investigators look into the invalid profile from the eyelash and find that it pertains to a janitor who vanished a few years prior. Vincent feels uneasy when he hears them talking when they are in the office asking some questions. Even worse, as the 20-minute recording comes to a conclusion, Vincent's actual comparatively high pulse becomes visible. He dashes to the locker room right away and passes out while trying to gather his thoughts. When Irene sees Vincent after work, she confesses that she read his DNA sequence which was, of course, Jerome's. She acknowledges that she is a lab baby and that she still has a chance of having a heart attack but she is also quite astonished by how flawless he is and feels inadequate. She will therefore never be permitted to participate in a mission. Irene gives Vincent a lock of her hair and encourages him to test it to find out if she has any genetic faults, when he says he doesn't notice anything wrong with her. Vincent throws the hair aside and says the wind blew it. A while later, as Vincent is using the computer, all of the staff members unexpectedly receive the invalid's profile from the eyelash, since he is a wanted man. Fortunately, no one sees him, but Vincent is still terrified. He informs Jerome that he he is the main suspect as soon as he comes home and begins discarding all of the blood and pee bags. He is instantly stopped by Jerome, who tells him that they would never see an invalid in Vincent. Vincent makes the decision to go out that evening, since it would raise suspicions if he altered his routine. Upon peering out the window, Jerome notices that Irene has arrived to get Vincent. Shortly after, Vincent and Irene are going on their first state a piano concert. When the pianist tosses his glove into the crowd following the performance, Vincent discovers he has 12 fingers. Irene explains that only those hands could play such a complicated piece of music. In the meantime, the police are gathering up a number of invalids from the community in an attempt to identify the killer. But it's clear that none of their DNA matches the eyelash. When they reach Jerome flat, they decide to look into every building that surrounds Gataka, and when they do, they also give him a blood test. The wheelchair-bound man's employment at Kataka surprises the detective. So Jerome acts wounded and rants at him, claiming he was injured in training, and accuses him of discrimination. With no desire for conflict, the detective walks away. Some officers remove all of the trash bags from Kataka. While the police are checking everyone in the neighborhood, Irene and Vincent discover that they have blocked the road on their way home. Vincent takes off his lenses right away and claims to have had alcohol in order to avoid having to spit in a test. Instead, the police get a blood sample and and as usual, he cheats them with a phony fingertip. A few kilometers ahead, Irene stops the car and says she wants to show Vincent something after they pass the check. Vincent is worried as he can't see clearly without his contacts as she sprints across the street and avoids oncoming cars. He enters after having many doubts and, happily, escapes being struck. Subsequently, Irene brings him to witness the sun rising at the solar panel center, resulting in a stunning display of light that Vincent perceives as rather fuzzy. Vincent tells Irene that his eyes appear different as they leave, but he believes it's only a 
a trick of the light. The investigators learn later that the eyelash and the cup found in the workplace trash share the same DNA. They speculate that the administrator was killed by the invalid because he discovered the truth and that the invalid may be operating undercover. To be certain, they inform Gitaka that blood samples will now be drawn directly from veins rather than from the fingertips. When it's Vincent's turn, he leaps out of his seat, rapidly switching his blood sample with Jerome's and pretends the doctor has wounded him with the needle. When the tests are rerun, the investigators find no matches. Vincent and Irene go on another date that evening. The police break up their lovely dance by gathering up various items containing DNA, such as cigarette ends and napkins. Since they also want to test others, Vincent and Irene quickly flee by the back door. When a policeman tries to break them up, Vincent starts hitting him until he passes out. Vincent pulls Irene away. So they may flee down some shadowy passageways as she becomes alarmed and accuses him of being crazy. The pair hides in an alleyway when the other police officers discover their comrade on the ground and begin searching for them. Irene asks who Vincent is as one of the detectives yells his name and Vincent responds by kissing her. A few moments later, the pair is enjoying their first date at Irene's place. Vincent hurries to the beach in the morning after discovering a hair on the pillow, where he uses pebbles and sand to remove extra skin from his body. When he returns, Vincent claims it was a vehicle accident when Irene questions him about the scars on his legs. In the meantime, the investigators determine that additional testing is necessary after contrasting Jerome's profile with Vincent's. They return to Gataka and, still referring to Jerome, grab the keys from Vincent's keyboard as they inquire about him. When Irene hears this, she tells Vincent right away that he should go home because he is sick. Irene informs the investigator that Vincent went home because he was sick and Vincent realizes that she is speaking in code and departs the building. The investigator seems unfazed and asks Irene to drive him to Jerome's house. Meanwhile, Vincent calls Jerome and informs him that the cops are on their way and that he should be himself. Jerome needs to get out of the wheelchair and carefully pull his legs up the steps to the main floor. After some time, he finally reaches the buzzer in time to let Irene and the detective in. Following that, he drags his body to the chair and straightens his legs to appear normal. When the two enter, Jerome does his part and asks Irene for a kiss, which she grants him in order to maintain the deception. After drawing blood, the investigator is irate to discover that this is, in fact, Jerome. The detective then tries to head downstairs, where Vincent and the lab are hiding. But just as he is about to leave, he receives a call from his partner informing him that they have found the murderer. Subsequently, Vincent emerges, and Irene spots him beside Jerome as they address each other by that name. She runs out in pain, but Vincent pursues her, explaining his predicament and pledging he didn't kill anyone. Irene exits, still cautious. The director's spit is discovered in the victim's eye at the police station, proving his identity as the murderer. It turns out that the director assassinated the administrator in order to fulfill his goal, because he had threatened to revoke the Titan mission. After a while, Vincent and goes back to his desk to discover the detective there. He makes a shocking revelation at that moment. The detective is Anton, Vincent's brother. Since they hadn't seen one another since their teenage years, they hadn't initially recognized one another's faces, but Anton began to piece the puzzle together as the inquiry progressed. An argument breaks out as Anton accuses Vincent of fraud and demands that he be arrested. When Vincent reminds Anton about the previous race's winner, Anton challenges him once more, believing that Vincent wants to see him lose. By the time the brothers arrive at the shore, it is nighttime. They leap into the ocean with great speed and begin swimming until they can no longer see the coast. They keep going despite Anton's concerns that they are going too far, but Vincent considers him a coward. But as Anton begins to notice his weariness once more and brings it up Vincent at last admits how he manages to accomplish it. He never conserves energy for the return. When Anton spins around in frustration and begins to drown, Vincent turns around too and grabs him so they can both swim to safety. Vincent visits Irene a few hours later and gives her a lock of his hair. But Irene discards it, claiming the wind was to blame. As a farewell, they spend the night together at her house, because Vincent will be leaving for his mission in a year. When Vincent gets back to his flat the following morning, the lab is wrapped in plastic. Jerome indicates he won't be here when Vincent arrives by saying he's prepared enough sample bags to last him two lifetimes. All he responds when Vincent asks where he's going is, I'm traveling to. Vincent receives a card from Jerome as well, with an instructions not to open it until he is in space. Vincent then visits Kataka to prepare for his assignment. The physician notifies him that a fresh urine sample is required due to a policy change. Vincent starts urinating in a cup and bemoans the loss of his dream because he hadn't anticipated this and forgot to carry Jerome's bag. But the doctor admits that he's always known and has never spoken up because he believes he should be treated better and because he too has an invalid child. Even though the machine provides the incorrect profile, the doctor modifies it to Jerome's and yet permits Vincent to pass. The doctor tells him before he departs that he knew because Vincent consistently grasped his member with the incorrect hand. When Jerome leaves the planet on the spaceship, he takes his silver medal from the apartment and goes into the incinerator, putting an end to things for himself. When Vincent gets 
gets close enough, he pulls open Jerome's card to find a sizable lock of his hair. In a sense, Jerome has now also been to space. 